It's Celebrity MasterChef. It's been taken to the next level, and quite frankly, I'm really going to have to cook my socks off. These celebrities are all passionate about food. From now, it's going to get a lot, lot tougher. We're looking for that exceptional cooking style. Someone who's more than just a good home cook. Someone with that extra something special. I want to win MasterChef in the same way that I'd like to get a BAFTA. These 12 celebrities have been battling it out for a chance to become Celebrity Master Chef. A quarter finalist is Andy. Is Hal. Is Claire. Seriously? Yeah. It's Lewis. Congratulations. Yeah. They've been whittled down to four exceptional cooks. Andy Peters is the well-known TV presenter. There is something about Andy which is incredible. He gets better and better. Claire Richards is the singer from pop supergroup Steps. That is home cooking at its best. Lots of flavour, lots of comfort food. I love the way that lady cooks. Hal Simons is a regular on The Bill and Little Britain. Hal is the quiet assassin. He's the man who's sneaking up behind and he's the one who is going to play his cards today, I reckon. Lewis Emmerich is the star of Brookside, Casualty and Last of the Summer Wine. There's not a lot of finesse about his food, but it's big, it's rustic and it is packed full of flavour. All four believe they have the talent and the skill, but the competition is about to get tougher. First, they will face the classic recipe test. Lots of nice soft potato, a little bit of crust on top. It needs a little bit of seasoning. Then they will have to wow the judges with their own three-course meal. Well, it's delicious. That is gorgeous. At the end of today, only two will become semi-finalists. The other two will be going home. Are they good enough to get through to a semi-final? We're about to find out. Days like this are really exciting. So this is what we call the classic recipe test. Your classic recipe today is a fish pie. You have one hour, and at the end of this, one of you will be going home. Let's cook. Following identical instructions, they have just one hour to create a classic fish pie recipe. Good fish pie consists of perfectly cooked fish in a velvety sauce topped with creamy mashed potato, all of which must have the right flavour and consistency. I love it when the contestants all cook the same thing because it's so easy to judge them. We have one recipe there and I promise you we will get four completely and utterly different dishes. This is a difficult task and for me, I think one of the great benchmarks of the modern cook. Can you get a really good fish pie? So far in the competition, Lewis has proved he has a great palate. The flavours are very, very good. Seriously, very, very good indeed. But he can cram too much into one dish. Right now, you need about seven different types of cutlery to eat with that. You need a spoon, a fork, a knife, a, a crab pick, two separate bowls on the side, four napkins. <laughs> I see they're going, how do I eat it? From what John and Greg have said, the taste of my food is good. What I've got to do now is bring the presentation up to the same level. But I've never followed a recipe before in my life, so this is a first for me. What's your concerns, though, right now, then, Lewis? Trying to get it completed. Uh, like I say, first time following a recipe. You couldn't hide the delight when you went through your round. I'm still excited. I'm still very ambitious. Doing something like this or preparing food for me, it's, it's, it's as good as a first night at the theatre. Howell has impressed with some classic dishes. The rice is cooked very well. Most of the seafood is really just lovely and soft. Nice, gentle touch. Great. Thank you. But he needs to tidy up his messy approach. How are you able to create this much chaos with just two dishes? Basically, any, any space you've got, I can fill it. The theory is that a messy cook is a bad cook, so I'm going to try and sort that out. 
Hal, it's good to see you true to form. Mess everywhere. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. What was that? Ow! <laughs> what is that doing in the oven? Um, it wasn't in the oven. <laughs> it was in the oven, it's, it's red hot. <laughs> What's a knife doing in the oven? I don't know, it must have got in there somehow. It doesn't normally bother me, the mess, yeah. but I have to say, red hot knives falling out of the oven... Yeah. It does make a chap wonder. Yeah, it does. It does. You've had 20 minutes. Andy is a talented technical cook. Wow. It's very, very good indeed. But his elaborate flavour combinations don't always work. The fattiness of that cream is just taking away your ability to be able to taste all the little subtleties. I oh, forget the sauce. Do you think you're going to have a very good fish pie? Yes. I'm going to make my fish pie taste nice and look slightly prissy, but not too prissy. It's important to me that everything I serve up looks nice. The fish pie holds no fear for Andy. I am full of fear, but I'm determined not to show it. You've only got Five ten minutes. minutes. Claire's hearty food has really impressed so far. That is nigh on perfection. What you probably should do with that is you should pack it in little boxes and sell it. That's fantastic. Really? <laughs> But she often struggles to finish. That's it, guys. Claire. Time's up. Your timing has messed it up a bit, hasn't it? I know. It? I just didn't get it all on the plate on time. The sauce and everything was done, but it's just putting it on the plate. I tried so hard. We're not going to talk to you for very long, Claire, because we know <laughs> that you're going to blame us if your timing goes awry. Um, I'm just trying to organise myself a bit better. So your chances of going through, you think? Uh... Pretty slim, actually, but I'm going to try my best. I've always had a problem with timing. I'm going to have to try so hard to, to get it right. Two minutes. That's it. Time's up. Step away from the pies. Classic recipe test, fish pie. And the idea is we should have a lovely, creamy, rich sauce which is taken on the flavour of the fish because it's been poached in it. We should have lovely pieces of fish which are not dry but soft. And the mashed potato should be fluffy, without lumps, and should be crispy on top. Hal, mm. start with you. Fish is tasty, not overcooked. The peas are sweet. Your sauce is a bit thin, gone a bit watery. Doesn't have that sort of the thickness of a creamy sauce that it probably needs. And your mashed potato is a bit watery. It's not creamy and rich. That is not thick enough. It's the sort of challenge that you've just got to do your very best in that moment. And either it works or it doesn't, and it didn't work. Um, I quite like the taste of it. I think there's some. Funny little details going on here, uh, like the skin on the fish, like the potato having holes in it. Considering you've never used a recipe before, though, that's, that's not bad, is it? Ooh, uh. Well, although thin, the flavour of your fish and sauce is great. I'm pleased overall. I've never cooked like that before, and if you just said to me, a few weeks ago, I'd be presenting something like that, and I said, you know, you're having a giraffe on, you know what I mean? So. Some little lumps in your mashed potato, Andy. Um, your fish is big and chunky, your sauce is the right consistency. I think the whole thing needs a decent amount more seasoning. Soft, but still firm fish, cooked absolutely perfectly. It's a very, very attractive pie. John did find a tiny lump in my mashed potato. Darn it. Um, but overall, they were quite positive, which was quite nice. I worked really hard. I've never made fish pie in my life. Claire. I am 
going to give you the award for the first person ever in the history of the world to be able to pour mashed potato over the top of a pie. Wow. The flavour and the consistency of your sauce is good. You have to, first of all, though, get through the potato, this liquid potato, to actually get to it. It's sort of like eating wet sand. Does that make sense? Yeah. The potato has gone so quickly because it's so wet and so thin, it just becomes part of the sauce and disappears in your mouth. Quarter final of MasterChef. We don't think the mashed potato should be beyond you, really. It's awful. I can't even... I messed up the probably the easiest thing on the whole dish, and the mashed potato. So stupid. So stupid. We now have to have a chat, talk about your pies, and talk about the future, because one of you is going to be leaving us. Off you go. Bags is in here. Oh, oh my well, he's through. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We have to try and decide now who goes home. I would like to just suggest someone who I think must stay, and that's Andy. He managed to pipe the potatoes on. It was soft. It was very, very well cooked. It was the best-looking pie by far. Andy had the best-looking pie, but it didn't deliver on flavour. It could all have done with a bit more seasoning. So, therefore, I am now going to put so much salt and pepper in everything I make. Well, if we're talking about flavour, actually, I'd say the best flavoured sauce was Claire's. But you must be able to make mashed potato, surely. If I deserve to go out because of rubbish mashed potato, then that's the right decision, it's fine. I do feel a bit despondent now. Claire does cook, you can see that, because the way that she was constructing that pie, except for the mashed potato, were absolutely right. And it did have flavour. So Andy stays and Claire stays? Andy stays. We like Claire? Yeah. Claire stays. Yeah. So it's now between Lewis and Hal. Hal's fish pie, to me, was watery, and it was messy. It was messy because his bench was messy. You can't cook like that. I'm always messy, so that's not a sign of whether I was doing well or not. Uh, it's just I messed up that sauce. For me, in flavour value, Lewis's pie was very, very flavoursome. There was lots of mistakes. I know there was lots of mistakes. First time Lewis has ever cooked off a recipe. Hal didn't have anywhere near the mistakes that Lewis had. Hal's mashed potato was fine. It was only the weakness of that sauce. I mean, Lewis had mistakes piling up. Yeah, there is one to go home now, and I would be gutted, and I, I think there is a real chance that, um, that it could be me. Put a blindfold on and actually just put the food in your mouth, forget about the people, forget about the way it looks. Whose food tastes the best? We know you're great cooks. We do only have three places, though, which means that one of you has to go home. We've made that decision. Hal. Sorry, mate. Bye-bye, bye. -bye. Sorry, Hal. Thank you. Bye bye. Going home. I'm kind of disappointed, but it was kind of inevitable after uh, after my dish. So that's fair enough. I just won't make any fish pies ever again. No fish pies. Whew. Okay. You can breathe. You look very relieved. <laughs> I thought I thought I might even go in there. And now for the next bit. You three are going to cook three courses for us. And at the end of this, we will have two semi-finalists. One more of you is going to go home. Let's cook. The celebrities have 80 minutes to cook three exceptional courses of their own design. Claire is sticking to some crowd-pleasing favourites, but will need to get them out in time to impress the judges. I think I do want to win now. I'd like to show that there's more to me than just um, a spangly outfit and a dance routine. What are you cooking then? A herby burger on ciabatta with coleslaw and a triple chocolate brownie. <coughs> right, so what does this food say about Claire the cook? 
probably that I'm a bit of a piggy. <laughs> I like, it's all the things that I love, so... The idea of doing a burger for a semi-final place on MasterChef is a very, very game one. It's going to have to be a pretty good burger, Claire. Well, I like to think that it is a good burger. It's the burger that worries me. The main course is my concern. You've had half an hour. One of the dishes I'm going to cook today has critical timing issues. I've practised it nine times in the last 24 hours. You are head down, very, very serious, and working right, right to time. Y yeah, because this one really needs concentration, because it'll either work or there'll be a car crash at the end. The main course is a piece of fillet beef and a wasabi dressing, and also some mashed potato. The dessert is a hot chocolate cake with a caramel sauce. With every round, does the pressure increase? Yes, very much so. I don't, can't remember the last time I sweated on television. So there's a first time for everything. It is an extraordinary menu. It's the main course that worries me. I'm absolutely with you there. You know, fillet beef and wasabi, I'd expect to find on some noodles. But with mashed potato, cream, wasabi, sauce with beef, I really don't like the sound of it at all. Ladies and gentlemen, you've had one hour. It's no good something looking good and they're not tasting too good. I think what I've got to do now is add those two things. You know, the title, it's MasterChef, so something has to look good on the eye. You actually pack flavour into food, Lewis. Do you know that? I wasn't aware of that until you said. I mean, I, you know, I just... If, if I'm liking it, then, you know, if it's, if it's tasting good to me, then that's usually... That's fine, you know. Yeah, what if you don't go through? i would be gutted. Gutted. I can't, I can't tell you. Even worse than Liverpool getting beaten in the Champions League Cup final last year. Um, no, I will, I feel gutted. I'm concerned about Lewis's main course and salmon and avocado and sea bass. I'm not sure. Three minutes. That is it. That is it. Claire's menu starts with a goat's cheese and caramelised onion tart, but she didn't leave enough time to garnish it. The flavours are right, caramelised onion, the goat's cheese acidic, the softness of the, the, um, the puff pastry. It, to me, feels as though it needs something green just to refresh your palate. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna put a little salad garnish on the side, but I was running out of time. But tasty. Pastry's light. Cheese is soft and full of flavour. You're nearly there. It's an, it's an almost, I think. For her main, she's taking a gamble with a herby burger on ciabatta served with coleslaw and tomato relish. I came to this dish with all intentions of absolutely hating it. But the burger actually has got lots of flavours packed inside the meat. And then there's the homemade tomato relish, which is really tasty, slightly acidic, but still sweet, and four tomatoes. Your cold sauce is lovely and crunchy. Love your flavours. The meat is well cooked, and what really brings it alive is that really, really good relish. For pudding, she has done a triple chocolate brownie with strawberries and champagne. Your brownie is delicious. The brownie and the cream is absolutely fantastic together. The strawberries and the champagne taste delicious together. They don't need to be brownie, strawberries and champagne on the same plate. OK. I love your brownie. Can I let your recipe? Yeah. That is a beautiful cocoa-rich brownie. Set off with the mildness and the texture of the cream brilliantly well. Andy's starter is salmon ceviche marinated in ginger and chilli. Light, refreshing, it looks great, it tastes great, Andy. Thank you. I like the dish. Mm -hmm. It feels as though it could do with something else to give it a bit of punch. And it's this thing with you and salt. Talk about things like fish sauce, just to take it up one more step. Okay. And I think you can do better than that. 
His main is beef in wasabi cream with mashed potato and bok choy. Everything on here is cooked stunningly well. It doesn't need that mashed potato. My mouth got completely clogged up. This dish needs rethinking. I think the potato is very, very rich against that wasabi cream. Wasabi mm -hmm. is horseradish, Japanese horseradish. So what's the greatest thing in Britain that we eat? Roast beef and... Horseradish. What do we serve it with? Do we serve it with mashed potato? We serve it with roast, roast potatoes. potatoes because you need a crunch, you need a texture. Bowl of chips to dip in that horseradish cream, I'd be as happy as Larry. <laughs> For his final dish, he's made a hot chocolate cake with caramel sauce. Andy, you do make a very good pudding, i got to say. A pudding, for me, is as close to a cuddle as you can get in a dish, and that is what it's like. It's just warm in, it's lovely, it's... Brilliant. ..marvellous stuff. Well, it's delicious. Of course it's delicious. It's chocolate, caramel, vanilla cream. Of course it's delicious. <laughs> Andy, it's a fantastic pudding. Thank you very much. Will these dishes see you through to a semi-final? Hopefully my pudding will. Lewis's starter is scallops in a Prosecco dill sauce with flying fish roe. Your plates look smaller than they've ever done, which <laughs> means you're going in the right direction. <laughs> oh, rock and roll. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, mate. That starts off acidic and you quickly get the sweetness of that beautiful scallop on your tongue. Mm. And you finish with crunch like space dust. That is gorgeous. Oh, thank you very much. No, mate, that is gorgeous. It's sweet, it's sour, it's salty, it's taste of the sea, the textures are fantastic, it's delicious. Don't, don't let it change you. <laughs> no, no. His main is sea bass with fennel and perno and a salmon and avocado tian. You've got two dishes yeah. on one plate. Right. I'm going to eat them separately. That sea bass dish by itself, should you have calmed down today and really listened and thought about it and gone, right, I'm not going to go to the top, that is a star-winning, delicious, fantastic dish. Chucking the avocado and salmon on the side is almost like committing murder. The flavours are going from creamy to perno to acid to chilli. Your palate doesn't enjoy thrill rides like that. And for dessert, he's made a chocolate and almond tort with mascarpone cream. It's moist in there and it's chocolate. And there's the crunch of nut and it's very, very good indeed. For me, it needs something like custard, something runny that goes mm. with it to make it that slightly bit more sort of mushy like a pudding rather than it being like a cake. Okay. We have another very difficult decision, the second one of the day. Very, very soon we'll have two semi finalists. One of you will be going home. Thank you very much. I was shaking a bit. <laughs> so I was, I was like, shotgun this seat. Seemed like there was loads of time, and then he said it was like 12 minutes. Like, Quarter final, two semi finalists to find. Lewis gave, I think, a truly spectacular starter. He gave a decent pudding. He completely and utterly lost his way with the main course. When Lewis cooks a main course, he doesn't just cook one main course. He cooks three or four main courses and puts them onto one plate. It's just not right. But Lewis has got a seasoned, astute, well-balanced palate that I've rarely seen outside of professionals. To go through to the semi-final would just be out of this world. I would just be overjoyed. You know, I think I'd walk all the way back to Liverpool. I'd be walking on air if I got through the next round. Andy is trying very hard and cooking very, very well. Good cook. 
great cook, wants it, really wants it, got a big hunger for this competition and will only get better and better and better. The only thing that's letting him down is his seasoning and sometimes the odd combination. And today we saw that mashed potato and that wasabi cream. But he knows. He knows what he's doing wrong and it shouldn't take him much to get it right. The guy is so determined. I would love to go through to the semi-final, of course I would. If I, am I confident? I don't think so because I think that Lewis has got a fantastic dish and I looked very briefly at Claire's just then and it also looks great. From Claire, we had a goat's cheese and caramelised red onion tart where the red onions weren't properly caramelised and weren't soft enough. And all that had happened to the goat's cheese was that she'd taken the wrapper off. This is Celebrity MasterChef semi-final she's going for. The mistakes are just piling high, one on top of the other, on top of the other. I would hate to come this far and work this hard not to go through. I still stand by what I say about Claire, though. I think she's a really good cook. She's a good cook because she's proved her presentation skills. She does stuff that people want to eat. Yes, there were mistakes today, but again, it's her confidence. It's not about her cooking ability. She can cook, and she can cook better than some of the dishes she put up today. I can see it. I'm sure of it. You know the calibre of cooks you get in MasterChef in a semi-final or final. Which one of those would you invite to the party? quarterfinals of Celebrity MasterChef. We have to make a decision, that's our job. The first semi-finalist is Andy, congratulations. Thanks. So, one semi-final place left between you, Claire, and you, Lewis. Our second semi-finalist... ..is Lewis. Congratulations. I haven't seen my babe. Sorry. <laughs> to be told that you are a good cook from professionals is great. It's amazing. It has given me a bit of confidence. It's been them onions. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. Oh my word. You guys are just <laughs> fantastic. I'm just blown away. Absolutely blown away. I'm over the moon. This is unbelievable. Let the semi finals begin. <laughs> Cheers. Lewis and Andy will be back for the semi finals. Next time, six new celebrities compete for the title of Celebrity MasterChef. <laughs>